Hey guys, welcome back. Yeah, uh, today's video should be, uh, yeah, it should be quite something. Recently, 343 finally released official mod tools for MCC, and I'm not being dramatic when I say that they will literally change Halo forever. The potential for Halo mods is now quite literally infinite, right? I'm talking entirely custom-made Halo 3 campaigns, assets ported from other Halo games, from other games entirely, and even just created from scratch, loaded into pretty much whatever Halo game you want. Entirely new multiplayer experiences that no developer could ever provide, the recreation of elements of Halo from versions of the games that we never got to experience, among many, many other things. To summarise what's possible with mod tools in a simple intro to a video is just frankly impossible, so today I want to share a number of mods created with these tools that have absolutely blown my mind and I guarantee will blow yours too. It is still very early days with these mod tools, people are still learning the tools, so just bear that in mind that what we're looking at today will be rather rudimentary compared to what people are going to be making in a few months time, but it should give you an indication as to the unbelievably exciting future of Halo modding. I cannot wait. However, before we dive into today's very iconic list of mods, we gotta talk about the sponsor of this video. HP Omen and NVIDIA, who very kindly sent me the new Omen 15 laptop to take for a spin, and let me tell you, this bad boy is as beautiful as it is powerful. Built into this tiny, sleek frame is a NVIDIA RTX graphics card that allows for ray tracing to make your games look even more beautiful, and NVIDIA Reflex to reduce latency, along with a powerful AMD processor, all of which work in tandem with the Omen 15's awesome 144Hz screen to create a truly smooth, cutting-edge gaming experience. And furthermore, the HP Omen supports Max-Q 3rd Gen technologies like Dynamic Boost and DLSS, which only serve to boost your performance even more. To ensure that you really can rip and tear until it is done, the Omen also comes with a long-lasting and fast-charging battery, able to charge from 0% to 50% in 45 minutes with 12 and a half hours of battery life, along with also the Omen Tempest cooling technology with three-sided venting and five-way airflow to ensure that even in the depths of hell, your temps remain nice and cool. This beast of a laptop is already packed full of powerful components that allowed me to rip and tear until I could simply rip and tear no more. But it's even designed to be customised and optimised, with easy single panel access to SSD and RAM slots, so you never stop playing. If any of this takes your fancy, then you can check out the HP Omen 15 via the links in the description. Thanks to HP Omen and NVIDIA for sponsoring the video. Real quick, links to all of the mod creators and also their mods where applicable can be found down below in the description, along with a link to the Halo Mods Discord that I highly recommend joining if you're into Halo Mods, of course. But let's begin the video. Okay, so let's start off with Progenitor Gorge by Mythic Jackie. Now, the main pull of this mod is that it's an AI battle, and to be honest, I don't really want to spend much time covering AI battle mods because I don't think they really show off the true capability of mod tools. There are so many far more interesting mods out there, like, for example, custom asset mods, which is actually why I want to cover this mod, despite it being an AI battle. Now, bear in mind that we're playing Halo 3 here, right? We have a Halo Infinite themed HUD. We have the Halo 2 Battle Rifle the Halo Reach Assault Rifle, the Sidekick, a custom BR with like a red dot holographic sight, a custom UNSC motorbike, more on this bad boy in a few minutes, and the Wasp. Now, don't get me wrong, they all look great, but I've gotta say, the Wasp in particular really stood out to me. It looks really cool in the Halo 3's engine with Halo 3's materials and shaders and lighting, etc. It just looks so fitting. It feels as well like a faster, more nimble version of the Hornet, and I gotta say, it's really fun to fly around with than just do strafe runs on a squad of marines with. It's so damn cool seeing assets from other Halo games in Halo 3's engine. Honestly, it's almost surreal, to be honest with you. I mean, I would definitely suggest giving Progenitor Gorge a try if you're looking for a massive AI battle map that has a ton of fun new toys to play around with. Just one thing to bear in mind, though, if you're on the Covenant side, 
Sergeant Johnson is one of the enemies, so you might want to switch teams. You know what, actually, I do want to share one more AI battle map, but purely because of how cool the map looks, not the AI battle part. This is The Wastes by Zad47, which is a Covenant versus Flood AI battle at the foot of a giant sentinel wall, and this thing looks so damn cool. I love the scale of the sentinel wall. It really feels like it's towering over you, and it makes the battle seem so small and insignificant. And then, behind the wall, you have a crashed key ship and a flotilla of Covenant carrier ships above it. I don't know, I just, I really, really like the set dressing of this map. I wasn't going to cover it initially, but then I played it, and I just wandered around the map for a little bit, and I was like, no, there's no way I can't share a map that looks this cool. But then there's also some really cool models as well. Firstly, he's ported over the ever-iconic Sentinel Enforcers from Halo 2 that look really good in Halo 3, alongside the Brute Honor Guards from Halo 2 as well, which, to me, the Honor Guard was the coolest rank in Halo 2 by a long shot, and it was such a shame that it was missing from the Brutes in Halo 3, so seeing it back in Halo 3 looks so damn good. There's something so cool about watching that battle rage on with all of these cool individual units from various Halo games fighting each other while being dwarfed by the vastness of the Sentinel Wall they're fighting beneath and the key ship that's crashed behind them. It's a really cool looking map. So, this next mod has actually been popping up in my YouTube recommended quite a lot lately, and I gotta say, it makes me really excited for the future of Halo 3 modding. This is a fully custom campaign level, Canyon by Elote. Now, Canyon is a custom campaign level that Elote made for Combat Evolved, and to learn Halo 3's modding tools, he's decided to remake that level in Halo 3's engine, and I gotta say, seeing the first fully custom Halo 3 mission is utterly surreal. I mean, for years, right? Years upon years, mods like this in Halo 3 were nothing but a pipe dream. An extreme pipe dream at that. So, seeing them in Halo 3's engine, this far along, is so cool. Oh yeah, and also, just the cherry on top, Elote also decided to port the Combat Evolved Magnum over to Halo 3 as well, which, like I said, cherry on top, right? This mod is definitely one to watch, and is undoubtedly the first of many, many Halo 3 custom campaigns to come, something that has me very excited. Next up, we have some really cool atmospheric floodified multiplayer maps by Infinite Forges. He's taken both Heretic and Guardian and given them a complete flood makeover, and I must say, as YouTube's primo flood connoisseur, he's done a damn good job. The once majestic Pious Inquisitor has now become a dreaded flood hive. It's polished covenant metal consumed by biomass, guts, and infected matter. I like to imagine this is what the inside of a compromised, yet still active ship would look like, retaining its original technology and partly retaining its kind of covenant-esque aesthetic, but with a very parasitic twist. Very cool, especially the flood doors in front of the bases. Cool, yet still quite disturbing. But I gotta say, his Guardian flood map is definitely my favourite. Clearly, the Flood have become too powerful to be stopped by even the strongest of Guardian Sentinels, their abode succumbing to the Parasite as easily as any colony. The atmosphere of this one is great. As you all know, I am a lover of the ever-iconic Flood Fog, and it really does add a creepy undertone to this mysterious forest. An undertone that, of course, is only enhanced by the sheer volume of biomass and tentacles consuming the strange installation, and even beginning to consume the forest itself. I do wonder how differently these maps would feel or even play in an actual multiplayer game. Probably not that different, because I think they are meant to be kind of artistic pieces over actual maps, but definitely give them a shot either way. It's worth it just to kind of wander around them and experience the altered, rather creepy atmosphere. Okay, now this next mod was always a staple of Halo Custom Edition to me. It was one of those mods that felt like the kind of amalgamation of everything that made Custom Edition so special. It was such a wacky thing, but it was so cool to see it like being played in Halo's engine. And the fact that I just played it in Halo 3 is a surefire sign that Halo 3 Custom Edition is no longer a pipe dream, my friends. It's real. This is Rainbow Road 64 in Halo 3. Now, to say that Rainbow Road is iconic would be quite the understatement, right? But actually racing on it in Halo 3 in a mongoose is just surreal. 
not really because of the map itself, but because of the fact that I'm on the map in Halo 3. You can hear that a lot in this video because my brain is quite fried playing these Halo mods, I'm not going to lie. One of the things that I love most about Custom Edition was seeing iconic elements of other games in Halo. It was one of the most memorable things about the whole kind of Custom Edition Halo C modding experience for me. And seeing it come to Halo 3 makes me so excited for the future. And of course, besides that, it's Rainbow Road, right? I mean, come on, it's never not fun to race around Rainbow Road, even more so when you're doing it on Among Us. Okay, so moving over to more completely custom assets, we have the Bulldog. It is a great example of a totally new and entirely custom vehicle that still fits Halo's aesthetic like a glove. It's a UNSC motorbike, and I swear to god, right, it looks like something that you'd see in either Halo 2 or in the graphic novel story Second Sunrise over New Mombasa, which was also set during Halo 2. It has that really cool early 2000s slash late 90s Japanese military sci-fi look to it, like something that you see in either Evangelion or Akira. Yes, I know Akira is from the 80s, but you know what I mean. I really like this thing. As for its functionality, because Halo's never really had a motorbike before, it's, I'm gonna be honest, a bit awkward to drive, but it's still really fun nonetheless. I mean, if anything, just like the chopper, the awkwardness just adds to its charm. It feels so cool zooming through hordes of enemies, blasting nitrous out of the six exhausts, gunning them down with dual chain guns. This thing is really badass, definitely check it out. Okay, do you ever wish that you could step through a portal and play a version of Halo 2 that never came to be? Well, let's step through that portal. Firstly, we have a mod that resurrects the iconic Halo 2 E3 2003 battle rifle in all of its glory. The VKMT team did an absolutely incredible job with this thing. It is, I'm not even kidding, one to one with its 2003 counterpart in pretty much every way. Firstly, it looks to part in every way, shape and form, from the lack of ammo counter to the blue tinted scope and even the view model. Then there's the animations. They've managed to restore the totally unique melee animation that it wouldn't have, which is really, really cool. But then of course, there's the actual functionality of it. It's now single shot over burst. Definitely give this bad boy a go if you have as much nostalgia for the mythic E3 2003 Halo 2 demo as I do. But what if we got even more nostalgic? Go back in time even more. Well, here we have something that we were only ever teased about, the Halo CE Magnum in Halo 2. Elote once again has done such a damn good job at porting this bad boy over to Halo 2. Just like the 2003 BR, it functions identically in every way to its Halo Combat Evolved counterpart, in looks, in view model, in animations and functionality. There's something so strange, yet also so familiar about running through the streets of Old Mombasa, gunning down coveys with the God Pistol again. The Jackal Snipers have finally met their match. Okay, so continuing down this path of nostalgic things that never came to be, we have an incredible combo. A port of Greg Wasdyke's Installation 01 Macworld armor, paired up with Abby SV's Macworld turret model, both in Halo 3. Now, both these models on their own look incredible, but when you pair them up, man, I mean, look at this. This is just beautiful. This right here is the peanut butter and the jelly of classic nostalgic things that never came to be Halo. My lord, mod tools really are letting us recreate every damn cut Halo item ever, and I'm so happy about that. And actually, on that same note, we have the Brute Fanatics by Zad47. A mod that brings the Halo 2 Brutes into Halo 3, and I gotta say, I am really excited for this one. Not only do they look great in Halo 3, but I personally always much preferred Halo 2's Brute design over Halo 3's, and always wish that Bungie kept the Halo 2 design, at least in some capacity in Halo 3, so it's great to see Zad fulfilling my, like, what, how long now, 14 year long dream, <laughs> my man, thank you very much. Right then, this one goes out to all of you cultured Spectre stands out there who game after game have been ignored, disregarded, and just tossed to the side like an empty soda can. Vathakral has answered our prayers and brought the best Halo vehicle of all time to Halo 3. And it is rather glorious, my friends. 
He's done a fantastic job not only porting Halo 2 Spectre over to Halo 3, but also, in his words, upscaling the textures and improving the topology of the model. And I've got to say, it looks right at home in Halo 3. But he's gone the extra mile. He's also made some Spectre variants. Now, he's not shown them all off yet, but the one that he has shown off is a remake of the ultra-classic Halo CE 2003 demo Spectre. The Spectre that never came to be. It's really cool to see a version of this beauty in-game. Seeing it in-game, with its unique turret as well, in Halo 3 is so cool. Okay, so, so far we've looked at ported weapons, ported vehicles, and ported enemies, but let me tell you, nothing will ever give you that feeling of uncanny valley like ported maps. Seeing maps plucked straight out of Combat Evolved or Halo 2, still retaining the unique design quirks of their respective games, but running in Halo 3's engine with its lighting system and textures and game players, it's, it's uncanny valley. There's, there's really no other way to put it. Firstly, we have a really cool port slash remake of Jafirophobia by Kashima. Halo CE's map design was radically different to every other Halo game in that all of its maps were drastically bigger. And Jafirophobia is a prime example of that, so playing on it in Halo 3 is really damn cool. I always loved its creepy atmosphere in Combat Evolved, and it's absolutely still there in this port. There's something about all the foreigner lights on the bridge, the harsh lighting in both the bases, and the vastness of the canyon that gives it this really intimidating atmosphere. An atmosphere that I always thought was kind of exclusive to Combat Evolved and the general design of late 90s slash early 2000s games, but I guess not. Kashima's also done a really cool port slash remake again of one of my favourite Halo maps of all time, Death Island. As you can see, this once rather warm and inviting island has now been given a cold snowy makeover, freezing the entire ocean and I really dig it. You know that weird feeling that you get when you wander around empty multiplayer maps of old games that haven't been played or populated in like 10, 15, 20 years and you get that, w there's a word for it and I'm forgetting it right now, you get that weird feeling like the area is like abandoned but something's there watching you, you get it with like old Source games, Call of Duty World at War, the maps in that game give me that vibe. I gotta say, I kinda got that vibe on this map as well, and I have a feeling it might be because of the altered weather making it feel colder and making you feel more alone. I don't know, just check it out. Then, we also have a really cool Blood Gulch port slash remake again by Bean, previously of Installation 01, that looks fantastic. Rather than just porting over CE's Blood Gulch as it is and calling it a day there, he's instead updating the map with Halo 3 textures and assets so it actually looks like a Halo 3 take on the iconic map. Like a version of Blood Gulch that was actually built for and in Halo 3 and I've got to say, it really does look the part. I don't have too much to say on this one because Bean is not shared much but make sure you go and follow him to keep up to date with the project because no doubt it'll be a banger when it's done. Next up, we have an insanely cool kind of what if mod by R93 Sniper. He's ported over Combat Evolves Mark V and given it to Chief, and my god, it is almost impossible to tell that this armor was made in 2001. I don't know if he did something when he ported it over to Halo 3, or if Halo 3's lighting engine really is this god tier, but man. It looks incredible. There is no way you can tell me this armor looks like 20 years old now. Don't get me wrong, I love Halo 3's Mark V helmet, but come on, you can never top the original, and this is proof of that. Combat Evolved Mark V is the GOAT. However, he's not just stopping there. Believe it or not, this cool ass port is only the tip of his modding project iceberg. He's also working on porting over the Halo Combat Evolved campaign to Halo 3's engine and essentially making a Halo Combat Evolved remake slash remaster in Halo 3. This is definitely one to keep an eye on. I am really looking forward to seeing how it progresses. And then we have the one thing that so many of us want and yet so many of us also know that we'll probably never get. Halo 3 Anniversary. Well, kind of. So, Tillis and Adora Burb are working on replacing Halo 3 assets with their ported Halo 2 Anniversary counterparts. Now, yes, it's still very early days on this project and I don't really have much footage or anything to share about it, but I just wanted to give this one a shout because when it's done, I guarantee it's gonna look incredible. 
Okay, I know that I specifically said Halo 3 mods were blowing my mind in the title, but so far in this video we've covered some Halo 2 mods, and I, I need to talk about this one. Combat Evolved Plus. CE Plus is a really cool mod that feels almost like an alternate dimensions version of Halo Combat Evolved, like if Bungie designed CE's gameplay to be more in line with other popular shooters at the time, like Quake or Unreal Tournament, and even, to a degree, Tribes. I get a sort of Combat Evolved Pro Mod vibe from it, which is really cool, but easily my favourite aspect of this mod were the weapons. It features weapons that were only ever seen in super early builds of Halo Combat Evolved, and that never made it anywhere near the full release of the game. We have the Combat Evolve 2000 Demo Bolt Action Sniper, which honestly, I'm not kidding when I say this, I think felt better than the regular Sniper to me. It felt like Halo Sniper had a baby with the COD 4 M40A3, which is such a cool combination. I honestly can't put into words how much I love this thing. I had an absolute blast with it. We have the Gravity Rifle, which functioned like a railgun and looked insanely cool, restored pretty much one-to-one -one with its long-lost brother from early, really early Combat Evolve builds. And then we have the Excavator, a pocket shotgun with a stun effect and some really cool sound design that was also present in, again, really early Combat Evolve builds but never saw the light of day in a full game. There's also an SMG and an MA5B with an underslung grenade launcher as well, which is really cool. The armor shares similar traits as well. On some maps, the Spartan wears a Mark V CE version of Scout from Reach, which honestly looks so natural. But on others, you wear a beautiful, entirely faithful recreation of the Macworld 1999 armor that looks truly incredible in Combat Evolved's engine. It looks so at home, just like it never left. The team absolutely nailed this armor, it looks incredible. There's also some new maps as well. There's Gravity Action, which is a low gravity boarding action, Birdcage, which is like a totally new Pillar of Autumn meets Cairo Station map, and then three others that I didn't get to play. CE Plus releases on November 15th and includes four new maps. There's CO2, Hectic, Birdcage, and Intensity 2.0, along with Gravity Action and Chiron Plus that are both MCC exclusive. It has a campaign mod that showcases the mod tag set, an original Xbox version, the full tag set for custom edition and MCC, and resource files with full HD upscales of CE assets. To follow updates on the mod, follow VKMT on YouTube along with Ludus Regard and Vengeful for Dam on Twitter. All links, as with the rest of the mods, can be found in the description. This is such a cool mod. Massive shout out to the VKMT boys for hosting a game night so that I could get some footage and play. I had a ton of fun and I guarantee you guys will as well. Check it out. And for today's final mod, it's less of a mod and more of a modder. I want to give a shout out to Rejected Shotgun, whose latest mod managed to get this thing, the Albatross that was always just a bit of scenery on Sand Trap, fully working even with its own gravity system so you can literally ride in its hangar while it flies. This is insanely cool, as are his other mods, so definitely go and check his channel out. The link is in the description. And so that does it for the first of many modding videos to come. I know for a fact there's going to be mods that I either forgot to cover in this video or that I didn't see in time to cover in this video, but don't worry, there are going to be so many great mods made and we're going to get to them in more videos to come, I guarantee. Don't forget to check out all of the mod creators and their mods that I showed off in this video. As I said at the start, the links to all of them can be found in the description. Massive shout out to everyone working on mods for MCC. You're making some incredible content and I cannot wait to see what you come up with in the future. The future of Halo modding, I don't think has ever been brighter, quite honestly. I'm very excited for it. So, I'm going to round this one out there. I want to give a massive thank you to CleverHeart95 for becoming a new iconic one over on Patreon. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate it. And also, a massive thank you to everybody who continues to support me over there. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.